this workshop that we've delivered a few times now on the illustration program. Essentially, it's a, a, a VR version of Exquisite Corp. So I, I'm sure you're probably familiar with that, but it was a sort of surrealist drawing game um, developed by Andre Breton, uh, Marcel Duchamp. And you may have played it as children where you get a sheet of A4 paper, fold it up, draw the feet, and then you, you create a figure. So we, we thought about how that might translate into a, a kind of VR space and a collaborative space and sort of have got a loose interpretation of that. So this was just a visual example. And I think when students have done it, some have, have worked figuratively, sort of creating characters, and some have just explored shapes and forms. Um, essentially, in your pair today, one person, um, if we were sticking to the exquisite corpse rules, one person would create the first half of the drawing, cover it up, perhaps leaving a reveal of where they want the next person to, to work, then they would enter the room and create theirs and then cover it up and we'd have a reveal at the end. I've got an example um, that I quickly did this morning just to show you, but I think we've run this a couple of times and the students in the first session have felt more comfortable working together in the space rather than having that concealed component and just sort of use it as a learning experience. And I, I think that's probably better for you today to both be in that collaborative space, maybe chatting and working out, but going through the, the process. So you're, you'll sort of be better equipped to deliver it. So this is the PDF that I've uploaded to resources, just introducing Exquisite Corps. And then um, this, uh, just the instructions, a sort of more detailed set of instructions taking you through um, the, the activity. I'm not going to go through this now because I'm actually going to show you and I think it's a bit more accessible if I show you, to be honest. Um, this introduces layers and I don't think we've got we've got time to really deal with that today. But so that's the brief. By all means, have a look. And, and revisit that. So um, before we get started, um, Chris just mentioned it, but I'm going to show you how to cast. So the first thing you do on your phone or, or on your desktop, you go to oculus.com forward slash casting. And this just shows you the instructions of how it takes you through the instructions of what you need to do on your headset. So um, I'm going to go into my headset now and I will cast. So, um, so Basically, there's there's two ways of of casting. So if I go um, into Gravity Sketch, um, then if I want to cast, I will press the small Oculus button on on the right um, drawing hand, and you get this sort of opening screen come up. And then you'll see there that blue button above the resume. That's that's. Um, um, you just click that, select that, and you will start casting in in the um, browser window that you've opened on your. You have to choose computer. Phone. Yes, sorry. Um, you do have to choose computer. I can't show you that. Yeah. Um, there is a, another way of doing it. So, um, if if I quit um, Gravity Sketch here, so you can go to the sharing in your main your main menu. So. Um, Again, click sharing, you get the, the sharing um, screen come up. And this is quite um, a, a useful interface because you can take photo stills in any any sort of um, location you're in. You can record a video and you can see the casting button there as well. I, For some reason, I find when I access casting here, I find it a little bit more reliable than when I click the casting button in, in Gravity Sketch. I don't know if you... Yeah. Um, so, OK, so that's that's how you go about casting. Um, so let's enter Gravity Sketch. So I'm going to go to my app library, open Gravity Sketch. So um, here we're at the main Gravity Sketch menu. I think with this workshop, how I've suggested doing it in the past is because you'll have a group of maybe two, three, four students working on a single drawing. Um, I think the intention was you would use the collaborative space and the personal space. So the collaborative space 
is where the drawing would form and then perhaps the other students not wanting to see that element of the drawing would be working independently in their own personal spaces um, and then they would enter the collaborative space when each person had had finished their their component of the drawing if that makes sense so down here you've got those two spaces um, okay so i'm gonna select the education and then um, UAL CCW space and then go to landing pad. Um, there's actually quite a lot of rooms in here, but you'll see I, we've created a number of rooms today. So accelerate group zero, accelerate group one, I think up to group four. So there's um, enough groups for all of us. And what we'll do when we get started is allocate a room for each of you. So, so if, if you were in a pair, for example, you could enter that one room and you would perhaps give each each other a number. I'd normally number the students and say, okay, student one can enter that room now and start drawing. Um, Do you want to show their colours on the menu? Yes. Um, so on, on this side, you've got your avatar and you can change the colours of your avatar. Um, when, when you're working together or you've got numerous people in the room working together we found it was really helpful to have an individual color just um, it just made the communications much more easy and understanding your your position in the room sort of aligned to other people and um, you can enter your nickname just by um, clicking on the pointer and typing in your name there so um, I've kind of I've done a quick sketch in, in accelerate group zero so i'll just enter that room by uh, moving the pointer and clicking the the trigger finger so you can see here um, i'm in the room so i'm just using the left hand grip um, trigger just to move around that that room i've got the central axis here so this is the sort of finished um, drawing if you like with each component covered up so I, I quickly did this before you arrived this morning so we, we're kind of working towards something like this so if I then reveal the the sections we we, we sort of have an exquisite core so um, those boxes I've just selected and I'm just holding down the grip figure just to move them and then just to move them back um, I'm just gonna click the back button. So um, I'm going to take you through a, a few kind of functions that I think that will enable you to, to sort of create your drawing this morning. So we've got our um, this hand here, which is our drawing hand, our non-drawing hand. If you are left handed and want to swap them over, like we said yesterday, you just tap the two um, handsets controllers together. It's quite interesting if you rotate your non drawing hand this way, if you want to find your way back to the main main menu, you can see exit to lobby. Um, so there's a shortcut there to exit the lobby and you just use your right hand to direct the pointer towards exit to lobby. You've also got a take a screenshot option there. So um, to get. Yeah, and um, the microphone there you can turn off. We, we, we have that off. Um, it's good practice to have it off at all times. We we find. If you're physically in the same room again, that's better. And that's actually um, Chris up there. You yeah. can see. Mm -hmm. So I was just gonna. But I've basically joined your room as a. So I guess this is working. Now. This is what I wanted to demonstrate yesterday. So so I just basically clicked in, into the room from the desktop app. So I'm now seeing. I'm now in the room as Christina says there, and that little box there, the TV box. Um, and I can navigate around Matt now as he's talking. Um, and yeah. So just thinking now, Chris, the, the people watching online, rather than me sharing my screen, I would they be better exactly. sharing? So, so I think uh, there's a microphone here as well. So I'll do that now quickly. OK, so I'll, I'll stop sharing. Um, so, so this kind of, again, sort of, you know, so you might have got jerky headset because that can make it makes me feel both safe or not. So I'm going to be able to move them. And also the instructor doesn't have to worry too much about keeping their head really still. So basically what, what I'm going to do now is exactly that. Share. Share my gravity sketch view of my desktop app. 
So everyone online can see that. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So. So I'm sharing my desktop view um, of the dogs to get you, and I'll just quickly show you that. So, so it shows who's in the room here. I think, um, if I remember rightly, I'm now observing through Matt's eyes. By clicking this button, I can I can jump between either looking through Matt's perspective or not. Yes. I'd like it, I'd like it. So it's probably quite good to stay. To go on your again. Um, it's probably quite good to stay with my perspective whilst yeah. I'm showing. Oh, and to close it, I think I just hit that. Yeah, um, I'm back out now. And I just quickly show this map. So to navigate around, I'm using the WASD keys, which again is the same as walk, walking around um, um, frame or any sort of uh, WebEx Army space. It's good to have a mouse connected. So I'm using the middle key, the, the middle scroll button to basically pull myself up and down. So you can really sort of navigate yourself around and you can see the potential of this. You know, if it's like a tutorial or something like that, um, being able to observe uh, the observer. So I'm going to go to the match view now. There you go. OK, so um, I'm back in the space. Um, we mentioned this yesterday, the idea of scale. So I'm just holding down the two um, grip buttons there. So if I hold them down and move um, the controllers either closer or away from one another, then you get a percentage of the scale we've we've recommend um, recommended 100%. Um, I think that's good practice. You can you can fix that scale if you want to, but um, I, I think it's fine. I, I like the idea that I can. Matt, just to let you know, and this is again just I was using this. Um, you know, this is development software, so um, there's some things that we won't see that you're seeing. So you know where it shows the percentage where you go like Yeah, that. you're not seeing we that. We don't see that. Okay. So uh, if you don't mind, maybe it, it, maybe we, we can explore this. What, you know what the limitations of this are at the moment. And this is where working with Great Session is good because we go back to that to say all the uh, user interface is not showing on when we do this, and it'd be really great if the user interface was and they add it into the top line. That's that's the relationship we can come to get. So, uh, so we just be mindful of that. But if it's important for you to show your UI, then you need to swap back to your headset. Okay. Well, you have to set the show the UI as well, Bob. Is he showing the UI? You try that. So, so in in the um, it, when you're in the headset, you get an option to hide your user interface or show your user interface, which can be really useful if you've got ten people in the room. And not having lots of user interfaces popping up, and one person there clings and they're really big for all. You can say, hi, everyone's user interface, just have the tutor's user interface given. Can you go to the people? Oh, we see it. We see it. Yeah. Matt, ah, we see it. It's good. Okay. So it's there. There you are. It's turned yeah. on. Yeah. So it's there. Yeah. Okay. If you want to show someone, you're teaching someone and you are actually in VR, you can show them your UI and say, OK, you click this, you go there, you know, so they can see straight. Um, OK, so we're in the space I'll, I'll start drawing so we we mentioned the the tool which is the the tool button which is the purple button on the non-drawing hand so um, i'm just going to start with the primitive objects here which i think for those of you maybe not familiar with model making um, which i include myself in that as well i think um, you, you kind of just get these these primitive objects so i'm just going to start by selecting the the cylinder. So I selected the cylinder. I'm going to close the tool now. Then I press the trigger button to create a cylinder and you see a large cylinder comes up. Um, for me, more often than not, it tends to be bigger than you want it. So holding that trigger button down, I then move the controllers closer together and it reduces in size. Further apart, um, it gets bigger. So I'm going to get something like that. Um, actually, sorry, delete that select it um, i'm going to reduce it a little bit more and then i've holding down the grip figure um sorry button whilst i'm holding it and you'll see the blue button on that the um, non-drawing hand i'm just going to press that and then it gives me the option to scale um, 
It's the edit, basically. Yeah, the sorry, the 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 edit mode. I'm okay with that, so I'm going to just press the blue button. I'm going to duplicate that, so I'm going to hold down the grip button and the trigger button at the same time, and it just duplicates it. So I'm going to go back to the primitive objects and now drop change to a sphere. Create my sphere, make it much smaller. And you can obviously change the color or you can just um, select the color before you start, so it doesn't really matter. And you can yeah. change it later. Or something. Um, I want to just work on that. So I've made my selection tool bigger or smaller there. I've made it smaller by pulling the joystick down. Um, so I'm just going to duplicate that. And you select by hovering over the object and it's got a red outline and it's selected. But you need to hold the side trigger to kind of keep it selected. So I've got my leg. I'm going to get my selection tool, select the whole thing, hold down both the trigger and side buttons just to duplicate it. Um, I've got my legs there. I'll just change the color. So the selection button I've expanded. Um, I've got all of it. I'm going to press the color button. Um, let's go for. Yeah. By going forward and back with the color beyond you, you can change the intensity of the color. Grayish, metallic sort of color. Um, and then I'll just go back to the primitive objects and sort of put maybe a cube or hip shape in. So again, um, I'll select it, hold it, press the blue button. Um, press the tick, the blue button again. That'll do. So imagine that's the first part of my drawing. And then so student one has completed the first part of their drawing and now the next thing is to cover it up. And all I'm going to do is, is create another pri primitive object. Just um, yeah, actually, that's a good idea. So I'll just again move the joystick up to make the selection tool much bigger. Hold down the left button. Of, so I've got the whole thing selected. Now you can see on my non-drawing hand, you've got that sort of honeycomb, purple honeycomb shape. If I press that now, you'll see now I've got the purple line around the whole of the object. So it's grouped those objects. So wherever I select it, it now has grouped those objects into one drawing. So and that one group is the same. Yeah. Um, I'll go to the primitive objects again, create another cube, move my hands together just to scale it. Um, I'll do or I've got it selected, just make it a little bit bigger, click OK, cover it up, maybe make it a different colour and essentially there I've got the first part of the drawing, student one can then leave the room, the second student can come in and then, then sort of draw whatever they want to do. So that's using primitive objects. Um, if we want to use another tool, um, the stroke tool, um, it's a slightly different uh, a kind of approach. Let me just use a white. So I'm going to work slightly away from that space. Um, very crudely. Really create um, there's functions to mirror to bake the mirror. You know, there's all kinds of yeah. I I I don't. I We're mean, not going to go into yeah, that. Yeah, it's a bit too. So also be mindful. Everything and uh, most things you could create in Chrome Sketch can be exported into other applications. So you'll notice the edit tool and um, when we use primitive objects, essentially you were scaling the object with with a component like this. If I go to the edit tool, you get a series of points 
um, and then you can adjust the point. So it's it's a bit closer maybe to the edit tool if you're used to 3D software, um, you can control it. So if you um, click OK, if you decided those ribs weren't, weren't wide enough, um, I can sort of move that out and create a, 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 a more expansive rib case. So um, there's our next element of the drawing. So again, I'm going to select the whole thing. Um, I'm going to group it. So you can see it's all now grouped. I'm actually going to select it and just make it a little bit smaller. From the view we've got, it looked like your head was a bit sculpted. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. um, maybe that's what I should try and draw next. <laughs> so again, I'll go back to the primitive objects. I've got my cube. I'm going to just add another cube, leaving the neck there. I'll colour it just to indicate another. And then the the final, we need to draw a head. So I think when when I started using Gravity Sketch, because I'd been using Blender a bit, I sort of fell into the trap of using it, I guess, more like a model maker and not like a drawing platform. And Gravity Sketch, Emil, when he first came in and did the workshop with us, it was really quite eye opening. And we've got a recording actually of that session because he used it much more like a sketching tool, which I think really shifted my perspective from sort of a model making um, product design tool to actually being able to sketch with it. Um, um, I, I think hopefully we'll, 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 I'll sort of try and do that justice a little bit now. It it may be when you're sketching with it, it doesn't translate as well into 3D form if you export it to Blender, but I think he was using it very much as a means to do quick sketches in 3D that you would then export, but then use that as a starting point to then create models in other platforms. So he he was predominantly using the, the ink tool when he was doing that. So um, we go back to our tool menu, um, ink, I'm going to change the colour to um, black. So I'll just use... Um, change the size of your um, drawing um, tool. Yeah. You um, put the joystick left, down. Left, uh, and left and right. Left and right. And that's one of the things I still get muddled. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to draw, draw a head now. So um, let's sort of do a... Chewbacca-y style budgie. So I'm, this is very much using it a bit more. I'm not really thinking about um, shape as much. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of building up this three dimension form through lines. Maybe I'm going to give myself a bit of a guide. There are, like Christina said, there are a mirror tool. So I, I'm not using it now. So essentially the mirror tool duplicates um, the drawing opposite, on the opposite side of the plane, so you get a much more symmetrical um, treatment. So, and also, you can import uh, reference images if you want to draw as a guide. So, you can import reference images and then you can remove the reference image of them. But sometimes you can have um, like a front view, a side view, a back view, and then you can literally draw the 3D around that. But again, that's more than model making. Yeah, so I've just sketched something in here, and Emil was quite interesting. He used the volume tool, um, which is not something I would have naturally used. But um, so we'll, we'll select the volume tool. I'm just going to pick, a, let's say, a green color here, and it allows you to fill a space with with lots of kind of volume. So I'm holding down the trigger key to fill it in one. In, in kind of one go, but you can sort of um, do it in lots of different sections. But if you were to export this now, this is where the, the sketching maybe doesn't really translate as well. It, it will export these as, as sort of separate elements. Um, So I'm going to just go back. Looks a bit more like a blancmange. Yeah. 
So yeah, I think that'll do. Um, I'll go to the primitive objects just to quickly add some as. Them. So both buttons just to duplicate. Group again. Can you repeat how you group it? Yeah, sure. So um, if I've got, I'll go with my eyes. So I've got one object, two objects um, side by side. So I use the um, drawing hand just to select the Change or change the shape of the selection tool is bigger. So you can see there the red line goes around both objects. I then hold the grip hand um, down. So that you can't see on the. Uh, sorry. So you can see it on the shared screen, but not on the one that Chris is. Looking. So yeah, I've got both of them selected, and then you see in the non-drawing hand, I've got the blue button and the purple button. Mm -hmm. The honeycomb shape. That's the grouping. So if I just press that purple button then it automatically groups them it returns them to their original location and then you can see you've got them so i can just even though i'm selecting one it's selecting both then whilst i'm holding it you can see there the purple button's changed and you've got now the the sort of broken capsule sort of shape so if i press that again it okay. ungroups it and the outline changes from purple mm -hmm. yeah, back, back to red so um, I've got both of them selected. I'm just going to press the minus button, which is the delete button. I'll go into here, um, group the whole object, add that to the top. Then obviously you create your drawing over the top and you've got your, <laughs> your, your, your strange camera outside. So that's what we're going to have a go at today. I know I rushed through that pretty quickly. Um, are, are there any questions at all? Um, well, how long have we been doing it, Chris? About eight months. But I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't use it that much. Um, not as much as I'd like because I, I'm, I'm teaching a lot. Um, uh, I, I'll show, I quickly show you. Um, I, I think there was just from an illustration point of view. Um, I'll show you one image that I've just been working at. Um, so this is all your stuff that's on the landing pad? Yeah, so this... You can access previous drawings you did. You can import previous drawings you did. So here's, here's sort of one of the drawings um, that I've been working on more recently. It's just loading. Like, the there is a need to, to use... Yeah, the um, so... Mm -hmm. going to use VR. So yeah, I, I mean this is me just sort of challenging the notion that it might be purely for product design or just as an illustrator maybe thinking about creating a, a world and so so selecting a ground plane and then coloring it the same as the background and then just adding sort of components so these are all kind of different shapes the clouds are are on different layers but then i've changed the transparency of the layer to to give the smoke effect so this, as as an illustrator, this is sort of as far as I've I've kind of um, taken it really in in quite a limited amount of time. Once once the controllers get quite sort of intuitive, um, then then actually you'll be you'll be surprised how quickly um, you you kind of develop. And when you're using the edit tool, there are tools like the surface tool, for example um which is so i'm just holding down the trigger finger now so with the leaves then i press both triggers and it just allows you to sort of create um forms quite easily so um then you've got the um, revolve tool which you can see is pretty um, big at this point So, sorry, the trigger tool. 
So you do, you kind of start picking things up really, really quite quickly. So you'll be surprised once you get on there and because most of these inductions is a few hours and it's really difficult to pick things up in, in that time. And it's, it's, I don't think we've quite got the balance right with students. We're trying to introduce it to students and doing even one day workshops when you've got an academic day that's four hours. There are kind of real limitations in terms of what you can do. Um, we've been working with some students as part of our VR research group, who three students who we've sort of allocated headsets to, and they've gone away and doing some really, really interesting stuff. And they're moving forward a lot quicker than we are just because of the amount of time that they can uh -huh. they can spend on it. So, um, so yeah. So but in I guess terms of adoption, I would say it's not. Um, it's slow, and that's okay. I think um, so. Whenever you're, you know, if you're teaching this stuff and you've got students in VR headsets, and some never go back to it, that's okay because I, I think a lot of those students have kind of registered it, and it's kind of written down a sort of potential toolkit that they could use. And what I find is those sometimes those students come back six months later. And they're like, no, I think we should have that rather idea for it. And I think a lot of this, a lot of VR use is is having something to apply it to. It's either playing uh, onboarding playing uh, or playing games, uh, or then having something to apply. And I think I was uh, and also in terms of the VR headset, again, I think when you teach the students, it's not to say you know, you've got to be a headset now and you're going to be there every day. It's not, it's like Photoshop. You, might be, you use Photoshop, you need Photoshop. And you just pull it out to use it for that purpose. So I think, you know, having that conversation with students is quite helpful. Because they don't feel that, they, you know, that also that they don't feel that they have to be in there every day. They have to be, they just need to find a use case for it. I, th I think there's there's a few um, kind of pages on the Gravity Sketch website that talk about workflow and give case examples, and it, it talks about this effectively being another monitor and the idea that you'll be sitting down with a monitor, your laptop, and then this, and you're moving quite fluidly between those spaces. Um, I, I think that's a sort of healthier way to think about it, really. And it is a sketching tool. I mean, it's not a polished kind of 3D modeling. Um, tool that's not intended for that. I mean, you can create something quite quickly, export it as an FBX, then convert it to a GLB and put it into WebXR. But we've got quite a smooth workflow. Well, obviously, it's not it's not a polished thing. Um, but you can maybe then, if you're, you know, no 3D modeling, you can put in the 3D modeling software and just change yeah. it a bit. I I probably wouldn't. If I'm being honest, build things in here and then take them into Blender. I'll just go straight in Blender. Um, but I would, I do use this um, to create quite simple models that I want, low poly models that I then want to import into Frame VR, for example. So the idea of the flowers, I might then import them into my my sort of frame environment as objects, for example. So um, I, I think it all depends on your individual practice, really. Um, I think yes, that's uh, the they're, they're naturally low poly when there is no, 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 no. But you can, there are settings for low poly. For, for poly density and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I, th I think we're keen just to get you started now. So the idea, maybe if you get into groups, maybe just in pairs. Um, and then me and Christina, I think we'll join your rooms and, and see how you you're getting on. But but yeah, I just ask, when we're in a collaborative space. Can we delete each other's work by accident? <laughs> like, um, you, you can, but you've always got the back button, so the red button. So whatever you do, um, yeah, what, what, whatever you do, don't don't panic. Take a deep breath and press the the back button.